Let's talk about network segmentation. In early network implementations, organizations, a particular organization will have a single IP address as a network part. And no matter how many machines or how many hosts or how many routers that organization has, it basically is going, you know, it, it used to have a single IP address as the network part. And these are called basically large networks. So as you can see on this slide, this particular network is uh, slash 16 and it has, you know, uh, like it can basically uh, support up to 65,000 host addresses on the same network. So this basically creates multiple problems like the broadcast traffic, particularly, you know, the traffic of DHCP and ARP. It has to go through, you know, this single uh, domain, which has around 65,000 hosts. And also the manageability and the security of the network is a big risk for such a large network. And um, also, what network would ever need to connect that many hosts on a single network? So these are some issues. And this basically creates a flat network configuration and it has its own issues. Okay, so this concept of subnetting, which basically, you know, divides a large network into multiple small uh, subnetworks. And these subnetworks are called uh, subnets. So we can basically, you know, divide this particular network slash 16 network into multiple subnets. And uh, let's divide it into five subnets. And then the network uh, portion is uh, basically, you know, has, has gone from 16 to slash 24. And as you can see on the slide, all the subnet in this uh, network, they are able to support around 254 uh, host. These are the subnet IDs which are assigned to each uh, subnet 150.50.1.0, 150.50.2.0, and .3.0.4.0, and so on. So, what the reasons uh, for uh, doing subnetting is uh, first of all, uh, we want to uh, reduce, uh, you know, or limit the broadcast domain. Uh, so that the routers, they don't have to, you know, forward or broadcast the traffic to all, uh, you know, the networks. Also, uh, we want to limit the traffic on other network segments. So, for example, you have an organization with uh, many departments. So, you basically create subnets of each department and then uh, traffic for a particular department goes to a particular subnet. It does not have to go to the whole, you know, the, the company or the organization. And also it provides low level security, uh, the traffic, uh, you know, of a particular uh, department or a particular subnet uh, is not going to penetrate into another uh, subnet. So this, this basically also, you know, isolates the traffic from one department to another department. And uh, now a router is basically required to subnet a network. So every interface in a router basically is connected to a subnet. And the devices on a subnet use router interface as default gateway. And each router interface is in a different subnet and in its own broadcast domain. As you can see on the slide, so there are basically, you know, three uh, subnets. And then the subnet one has its own broadcast domain. Subnet two has its own broadcast domain. And then this, uh, you know, the, the third subnet, which is between the two routers, is a serial uh, connection. It has its own uh, broadcast domain. So we, we discussed, uh, you know, the reasons for subnetting. Uh, we started off uh, with the, uh, you know, uh, because it was a practice to assign uh, one uh, network IP address to a big uh, network, a large organization. And then it, uh, it has its own, uh, you know, problems uh, like excessive uh, broadcast and other, uh, you know, uh, security issues. So, uh, you know, uh, it was decided to basically divide this large network into smaller subnets uh, and uh, this was the main reason uh, for, for subnetting.